Hello colleagues, today I'll be discussing a interesting ECG which needs attention and this ECG is usually confused some pathologies and is often mismanaged. To start with, I'll try to focus on the important aspects of the ECG and for that let us look at the long lead 2. So here we can see some funny looking complexes now we need to see what's happening over here so as we see that there are two different types of morphologies in the qrs that is being seen so one is over here and the other is over here now let us look at the p waves so we can see that at some places the p wave is preceding the qrs complexes just like over here and in other places we can't see a p wave and then we can see a different looking qrs complex as compared to the, this one so this means now this is a sinus beat which is basically a p wave preceding the qrs and conducting down very smoothly into the conduction system and this beat is a junctional beat because we can't see a p wave preceding this qrs complex so this means that the p wave is not driving the circuit and the other thing is the morphology of this beat so you can see there is a different morphology as compared to this one and there is no p wave so combining this the morphology no preceding p wave and third point is the rate of these two beads because we can't see p wave behind these two qrs complexes so and the rate of this rr and this rr is different so the sinus rate is faster as we know that the junction rate is around 40 to 60 beats per minute so this was around 60 beats per minute so this was the junctional firing that was occurring because the sinus node was not taking over the conduction system combining this so what is the result of all this presentation this is called the interference av dissociation so what is this term all about let's discuss this interference av dissociation as the name suggests is the interference between two things in this case we can see that there was uh, no correlation between these two complexes over here and the p wave so why does this occur for that the certain criteria has to be met and these are as follows the sinus rate and the firing rate of the lower tissues are almost similar for this to occur so over here we can see that the sinus node has gotten slowed down to the extent that the junction has the time to fire so the sinus rate slowed down and the junctional rate was around 40 to 60 beats per minute so they was almost kind of similar the sinus beat should not conduct into the ventricles here we can see the sinus beat conducting but here we can't see the sinus beat because this p wave is followed by no qrs complex the tissue downstream should not conduct into the atrium so this means this qrs complex should not conduct into the atria and as a result when this beats from sinus downwards blocks over here as shown by this cross and the beat from the lower down pacemakers if they get blocked over here and does not conduct into the atria then this results in av dissociation mean there is no association between these two structures and there is a dissociation now for that 
there has to be the rate which needs to be almost similar because if the rate is not almost similar then there is a chance that either beat goes above or downwards and conducts and captures it so we have seen that the sinus node when it goes down into the ventricles it produce a healthy looking complex but how will we know that the beat from the lower down pacemakers has conducted into the atrium or not for that we need to see the p waves because if this beat from the junction has conducted upwards into the sinus node then the morphology of this p wave should not be upright just like this so it has to get inverted p wave so in this case there was an upright p wave which just look like this over here so this was actually a sinus bead coming down over here and blocking over here which means it doesn't conduct to the ventricles and the junction bead from here could also not go upward into the atria to produce a uh, inverted p waves so this is an important concept to understand there are many things which can produce an interference av dissociations so in this case it was a junctional escape b that has produced it why it is called a junctional escape b because we can't see a p wave here and here and now to sustain the life the lower down pacemaker started firing which in this case was junction and now because this beat was from junction and it was an escape beat because of the slowing down of the sinus node it was called a uh, interference av dissociation because of junction escape beat other situations in which this interference av dissociation can occur will be junctional premature beats and the ventricular premature beats so this patient was basically having a sinus node slowing down leading to the junctional escape beat and producing a av dissociation which is called an interference av dissociation